Sleepers Podcast, Tuesday, June 18th. The return of the chosen one, Carter Elliott himself. It's good to have you back, my friend. How you doing? I'm the chosen one? I feel like if one of us two was to be chosen, it would be you. I mean, it, it, that's fine. Uh, I'm not saying I disagree. But if that is my label, I'm going to start acting like it. <laughs> like you haven't already been acting like it? No, nah, like I'm going to carry myself <laughs> like the chosen one. I would like to see it. What would be the most uh, like obvious change you would make to start carrying yourself like a chosen one? Hmm. I don't know. What do you think my first change should be? I don't know. You already shut up, pre- shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> All right, so this is great. <laughs> this is great. Can we get to the you? No, I'm kidding. I don't want to be the chosen one. That's too much responsibility. I'm not a responsibility guy. Can we start calling ourselves the chosen two? That's kind of heat. I've never heard of a chosen two. There's definitely been a lot of chosen ones through the years true been great trio there's been chosen trios honestly we need to lock down the chosen two market honestly well, that might just be what i start referring us to every single day okay uh, let's let's do that <laughs> my plant died over the weekend yeah that's not great but you're getting a fake one though i heard right i am getting a fake one fake plants i think are better than real plants uh no allergy issues no bees going around it. Uh, you don't have to take care of it. It's one less responsibility. Once again, not a responsibility guy. Big fake flower guy. Did you have a lot of bees going around your previous plant in your basement? No, but if a bee was to get into the household, that would probably be one of the first places it would go. Yeah, you're right. Doesn't seem like a very high threat level threat to you, though, in your enterprises. It doesn't, but honestly, everything's a threat level when you're the chosen two. That's very true. Are you into fake things in general? Like, are you team fake over real? Uh, With things like plants and things like that, yeah, with people, I'm more of a real. Everything else, give me fake. Mm. Would you say, like, like if zero is fake and 100 is real, where are you on the fake to real scale? 100 is real? Yeah. I'm like a 98. So you're 2% fake. Yeah. What part of you is fake? Probably the white lies I tell. (laughs) You got to be higher than 2%, I feel like. then. Yeah. All right, give me 95. Okay, that's good. Um, What would you say I am? Fake to real scale. You're like 107. You're like, you're dangerously a little bit too real. Oh, I'm too real. Okay. Yeah, you like you are most likely to keep it too real. So I got to work on being more fake. You could work in some more, yeah. Okay. Uh, I love doing this show with you because you just never know where it's going to go. Like, we're we're like seven minutes into this, and we've talked about absolutely nothing. We didn't plan to have any of these little these little banters. Do you think we're pretty good, good banterers? Yeah. I think that if there was, like, a some Guinness World Record out there for, like, longest banter by Chosen 2, I think, like, our banter ceiling is, like, probably 147 straight hours of banter wow. yeah we we really don't stop bantering on our own like we have to be told or asked politely to stop by others right now would be a good time to stop bantering and get to the uh, youtube comment of the day wouldn't it i think it would yeah do you have one i do have one this one comes from msp 710 my advice for fletch which he didn't ask for <laughs> is to simply all capitals play stronger and stop flailing around like a soccer player. Man up. Okay, I don't like the masculinity attacking in this comment. I don't like the advice when it's not asked for aspect of this. I also don't like people just advising Fletch to do, do everything. Operation Leaf Fletcher alone is my is my new my new uh my new found passion, and I will be leading that front. So if you have something to say to Fletcher lawyer, say it to me, or say it to Foster, but don't say it to Fletch. I am a lawyer. You are not a lawyer. I would make a great lawyer. I think you would make an awful lawyer. Really? Yeah. Like Foster Fletcher Harder? I'd I'd like to move on. I'm uncomfortable. Okay. 
Okay. Should we go to the Discord? We should. Please join the Discord, by the way. It's one of the easiest ways to support Sleepers Media. Uh, got great things going on there. Uh, only $9.99 a month if you join on your desktop. Make sure you join on your desktop so you don't get price gouged by the folks over at Discord and by the people over in the mobile apps, whoever handles that. Sign up now, $9.99 a month. Once again, if you're ever going to ask a way to support sleepers outside of watching the YouTube videos, getting our videos in the algorithm, like, subscribing, all that, the next best thing to that, join the Discord. You heard the man. Link in the description of this video. We read the comments every day. Today, we start with Purdue Fox, who says, when will you come to Purdue? And why will it be for the Alabama game? And when can we treat you all to Harold's Chocolate Shop? West Lafayette's got to show me, man. I'm sorry. So maybe we do need to come back. And maybe we need to come back on a certain day, certain time. Maybe it needs to be a week-long trip. Who knows? But West Lafayette has to show me. That's all it's I the say. only stop other than Champagne. It's the only stop we've been to twice. And... We did choose to go there twice, mostly because of how good Purdue basketball was two seasons ago. But I'm not itching to go back to Harry's Chocolate Shop. I'm not itching to, like, find restaurants in West Lafayette. Like, we ended up in an Applebee's. Yeah, where was that Applebee's? I don't know. It just, ugh, yeah. And it didn't have graduate hotels. Everybody else had graduate hotels. I really felt out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But that, that's what I'm saying. They got to show us. They do got to show us. Dr. Doctor says, all this reflecting and self-improvement going on has me thinking. I may have been too hard on Edie and the Boilers throughout the season. I'm not perfect. I have my flaws, such as singing too passionately in the shower, caring too much, slicing every drive 50 yards into no man's land. Anyways, I would like to take this chance to speak from the bottom of my heart and apologize to absolutely no one. The Cardio Cups Hoosiers do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> The Hoosier hysteria, I guess, is the word to use right now, is at an all-time high, even though half your team's in walking boots. Yeah, apparently that's just an Indiana thing, is to, like, just ignore injuries as if they don't exist. Like, no one's concerned about this. Like, we posted it, so, like, you know Bow is in a boot, right? Yeah, but, like, no, no, no. He's in a boot. Yeah. No, it's not just that they're, like, he's in a boot. It's that the official Indiana Instagram account is photoshopping his boot out of the picture, like, clearly trying to hide this. And Indiana fans are just like, oh, yeah, everything's fine. Like, no, it's not. Like, I'm leading the bandwagon this year, and I'm terrified of this. I Manor says maybe this is too hostile, but what if you guys did a casual Friday segment breaking down casual fan-level comments made by a supposed expert? Hmm, is that too antagonistic of us? I think we're good at being positively antagonistic, though. Yeah, until people talk about us, then it's just like, well, Jesus. Yeah, you know, like, are we just, I, we talked about this offline this morning, but aren't we kind of just in a perpetual state of, like, the Drake finger on the red button meme? Yeah, and we we pray, and I mean pray. That we're, we're pushed to the point where we have to push that button, no pun intended. It'll get spicy. But, like, also, I don't want that to happen. No, anyway. it's a lot. It's a so lot. In hindsight, we should not do what I made her saying, because I don't, I don't want that to happen. Boiler MCD says, what teams have the largest gap between their floor and their ceiling? Biggest boom or bust teams? Ooh. Ugh. Biggest boom or bust teams. I'm just thinking like really good, like top 25 teams. Like what's the biggest boom or bust? Um, Give me a second here. Do you have one that comes to mind right away? Uh, I mean, this one we kind of talked about last week in the Big Ten, but Maryland is definitely one. Um, although I would argue their ceiling isn't that high, but they're, people are very split on that. Um, I think Rutgers would have to be a pretty big boom or bust. Either it's going to work or it's not. Yeah. Um I'll say this actually. Nationally, there is some boomer bust to Cal at Arkansas. Like it could go very south. There that's a possibility. Yeah, it could. I agree. You're right. I made her says uh we are about ten weeks away from Florida State and Georgia Tech kicking off the college football season in Dublin. Any sleeper picks to make the playoffs? I got Missouri and NC State. Making the college football playoff, Missouri and NC State. That's crazy. They are expanding it this season, right? This is the first year they're doing it. 
Um, I think so. Yeah, yeah. There's twelve. Sorry, I got distracted yeah. on my laptop. Twelve uh, teams to make the playoff this year. Yeah, I'm not gonna come in here. I mean, I think Kansas State's gonna be pretty highly ranked. Um, but I so I don't even want to call that a sleeper team. I'm not locked in enough to college football right now to give you a sleeper team, so I'm not even gonna give you one right now. Yeah, I have to be honest as well, and I am also equally unprepared for college football talk. We will probably have some college football talk on the channel soon, though. We are uh, figuring out exactly how much college football we want to do, but a lot of people seem interested in college football content from us. Honestly, if you want college football from us, if that's something you think you would like, let us know, either publicly or in the YouTube comments or in the Discord, um, because I think we we have the ability to make that happen in a much larger way than we have before. We just need to like gauge the interest from our audience on how much college football do you want from us? Guy says weekly compliment to be a nice guy week two. You guys are the best bosses I've ever had. Are, are we the only bosses he's ever had? I think we're the only bosses guy has ever had. Also, are we his boss? <sighs> I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't consider us his boss. Yeah, we're your we're your confidants. I th yeah, I think we're we're teammates. We're role models. But you're kind of like the captain. We're co-captains. We're co-captains. But that doesn't make us boss of our like Right. We're just we're the emotional leaders of yeah. sleepers. You've always been an emotional leader guy, haven't you? <laughs> I've I've always been a big time emotional leader guy. Uh, let's see. Guy says, I have decided to start investing in the stock market to pay for college. I put all of my money in the NASDAQ and in a bet with an illegal bookmaker on the Iowa State Cyclones to win the national championship next season. The Iowa State Cyclones to win the national championship next season? I don't think Guy gets how the stock market works. If one sentence in, he says, I put all my money on Iowa State to win a title. Yeah, we'll work on that guy. We got time. Figure it out. Andre L says, I feel like with the NBA playoffs sucking, I got into watch old college games on YouTube mode much earlier than usual. What are some classics you go back to and watch? Uh, I watched I actually the other day I watched shout out to Michael Peterson. Um played at where did he play at? He played at Ferris, and then I think he played one year at Michigan State, and then was it maybe a GA after that? I'm not really sure. Yeah, he was at uh, MSU. It was MSU, right? Yeah, but yeah. I but he was he was a player for a year, and I think he might have been a GA for a year after that. I'm not positive though. But shout out to him. He posted the clip of uh Michigan State playing Kansas. Uh and I watched that game recently. Great, great all-time clip. Kalen Lucas and one into the corner to the low five is something that changed my life forever. And it was it was so great. Yeah, uh, I I mean, the one that's always in the DVR is the Trey Burke, Kansas shot, comeback game. Is it still in the DVR? Like it Always did, will be, yeah. But I'm saying, like, you you changed houses, like, you yeah. changed yeah. cable packages, like, yep. it's still there. Yeah, I don't have cable, but somehow I have a recording of that game saved and ready huh. to press a button, yeah. Um, right. Yeah, that's, that, that's the go-to. I would also say the Eric Devendorf, Syracuse, UConn, uh, six overtime game where he jumps on the scores table. That's another classic. I'll watch anything that's on. If you're watching like a Big Ten classics and they, they play old basketball, I just love watching. Scumbag Sully says, this is from last year's Jello Shot Challenge in which LSU smashed the record. If this happened in college basketball, between all 64 tournament teams, which fan base takes the most Jello shots? And do you think they come anywhere near LSU's record last year? What was LSU's record, do you know? 68,888 Jello shots. In what time frame? Like it's the College World Series. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I'd like to send a shot to Albion College. I think they'd be great in that competition. Sixty eight thousand is a lot. It is. We wouldn't have the we wouldn't have the numbers. Uh you gotta pick a big school, obviously. Oh no, I'd throw like a Texas out there. I think Texas could do it. But also at the same time, Texas is too hot. I don't know if you want hot jello. I think you need a fall environment. I look for Auburn to make a push here, possibly. I'm not sure how hot it is in Alabama. Um, well, they're Kurt, They're all in Omaha. It's Jello shots at the bar, 
in Omaha where the college oh. series is. So it's just it's the traveling fan bases are there to take Joe oh. Johnson. Oh, yeah. got you, got you. Huh. I'd like to throw Michigan State's hat in the ring there. They're not in the College World Series. We got to explain this concept to you offline. Guy I, thought says, we could pick, I thought we could pick any school. I think he was wondering if, if the schools this year could challenge LSU's record. Oh, I haven't watched a second of the College World Series for baseball. Yeah. Guy says, I was recently introduced to a genre called Midwest emo rock. I am not a Midwesterner, nor am I emo, nor do I listen to rock. As Midwesterners, can you tell me why a type of emo rock is specific to your geolocation? I cannot, but fell in love with the emo girl. I don't think the genre is called Midwest emo rock. Uh, Purdue Fox says, building off of Guy here, which of you is more likely to be a Swemo, aka Taylor Swift emo covers? Back to December by Riot House slaps actually. Back to December by Riot House. Yeah, that sounds scary. Um, I mean, I think Greg would be more likely because Greg is a uh more of a music aficionado, I think, than me. Um, so I give the nod to him. I think I'm playing plus money here, but I think it would be you because there's a world where like I'm into emo music. I'm not for the record, but I was like, I did have like an alternative pop rock, punk rock phase. Still like it. Like my chemical romance slaps. They're not rock. Are they? They're, I, some people would consider my chemical romance, like an emo band. Anyways, point is uh, you would be the better bet here because of the Taylor Swift presence in your household. Even if I was into that style of music, I would not be into like Taylor Swift covers. True, but it were, it's, it's, this is more like of a Taylor Swift purist household. Like we're not doing covers; it's got to come from the Don Swift herself. I guess that's true. Augie says, "My dad is an Illinois grad who has strong doubts about Braden without Zach Eady. How much do you think the lack of a generational center affects Braden's performance?" I don't think it affects it as much as people are saying it's going to. I think it just makes him look different in what he's trying to do on the court. Like he, he definitely tried to play through Zach Eady because he was supposed to, and because of how easy Zach Eady made it. But uh, I believe Braden can be a much better scorer than he has shown. He's one dribble pull-ups at the elbow were really dynamic. Uh, I think he's going to be just fine. It's just going to look a little bit different. It's probably going to look very similar to Tyler Kolick and what he did at Marquette as the first option. Nobody had an issue saying Tyler Kolick was one of the best players in the country. Everybody seems to have an issue calling Braden Smith that. I don't really get why. I Maynard says, let's say a young man in your family is like the number 25 to 50 ranked player nationally, not one and done good, but a potential power five. He's looking to you to advise him through his recruitment. How do you guide him? Do you point him to a contender even though he won't play or to collect a bag from a mid-major that's trying to earn a tournament bid, et cetera? Uh, I, I tell him to go for the biggest bag possible. Depend, Like, I don't care where it is. We'll go play in Perth. Uh, We'll go play in the depths of the – we'll go play for the Corsairs B. Shout out to Devin Oliver. We'll go play in Japan. Uh, Wherever the biggest bag is, that's where we're going to go. Okay, yeah, you and I are different on this. Um, I would try to use my advice to steer him to somewhere good situationally. Just like I'm not – I'm not letting him play at a school that's not going to play him. Poor. It's not about poor. I'll I'll figure out what the money options are as well. But, like, there would be schools that might pay you that might not play you. We're not going to let that happen. Like, you're going to be on the court if you're working with me as an advisor. Yeah. Uh, live look into me while you're figuring out your money options. I mean, nobody says you're getting some of the money here. You don't think I'm exploiting my top 25 cousin to get some money. You're out of your rabbit ass mind. So you're like the, like, nobody could talk to Bronny without calling the family first. Is that like yeah. nobody could talk to your cousin without calling Uncle Carter or Cousin Carter first? Yeah. I don't think that would go very well. I think it would. I'm trying to pick, like, what if Jake Diebler calls you to talk to your cousin? I'm, I'm going to ask him how many zeros he's got on that paper in front of him. I feel like you're probably going to hang up and insult Jake Diebler. 
Never. Not the I wouldn't insult anybody if the money's correct. What if Matt Painter calls asking to talk to your cousin? I'm gonna ask him how much money's on the table. Tom Izzo calls asking to talk to your cousin and says, Hey, I can't pay more than a hundred thousand dollars, but I want him to come play for me. I can't afford this phone call. Tom Izzo? Yes. <laughs> All right. Purdue Fox says, I'm biased, so I'm using you to check myself. I saw a Twitter debate. Uh, what is more impressive, Purdue's Maui Invitational Tournament win or Illinois' Big Ten Tournament win? Hi, Maui. Why? <clears throat> because I think that the Maui run was against – because it was, it was what? They beat Tennessee. They beat – Gonzaga. Can, Gonzaga and Kansas. Mm, I don't think they didn't play this. Mar they didn't maybe Marquette. That was who it was. Sorry, Marquette. I think that's more impressive than what was done in the Big Ten tournament because Illinois didn't even have to play Purdue. Yeah. Um I think more impressive sequence of games is probably Maui, but like the better accolade to be celebrating is definitely a Big Ten tournament. Like you, yeah, but I'm just like it. Maui was better. Like no, it wasn't. The Big Ten. No, I'm just looking at it. I'm just looking at like actual like the run. Just so you took two runs separately and put them together. Like which one was better? I think it's obviously Maui. But I'm fine with I, saying that. But I yeah, would, if I would give up that Maui for the Big Ten title banner, 100. percent If you're trying to get in an argument online over like Maui was actually better than your Big Ten tournament banner, you've lost. Like don't don't do that. Let let the people with the banner hang their banner. Um, Sleeve Nash says you guys did best skill sets in college hoops. I think you should do it for the Big Ten too. Predicting next year's, uh, not a bad idea. We can use that as a segment for sure. Maybe later this week. Put in the segment bank. We can do that. Burner says Happy Father's Day. Contract negotiation. I am willing to change my hopeful title from Big Twelve expert to Big Twelve consultant. And did I mention I will work for free? We'll talk offline. We don't negotiate, do we? I didn't know that was a thing. No. Yeah. No, we don't. Yeah. Ethan Woody. Uh, I don't know if this. Uh, you know what? We're just, we're going to ignore that one. That's not intended to be read on the show. Sorry, Ethan Woody. Purdue Fox says in honor of father's day, who is the father of the big 10? Clearly aunt writes during the pot here, but it brought up a good question. Painter, obvious choice, but what about other categories? Stepdad. Father like figure, Papa, Grandpa, Uncle. So you want us to define who the Papa of the Big Ten is? I'm excited for Carter's answer here. Aunt Wright's tweet had Matt Painter and it said Happy Father's Day to the current father of the Big Ten. Mm. I don't think you can be the father of the Big Ten. I don't know, like Matt Painter. I don't know if he's the father of the Big Ten. I think Zach Eady more have, might have more of a say of being the father of the Big Ten than Matt Painter. Yeah, Paint just doesn't. <laughs> we're we're getting inappropriate here. Paint doesn't give me like dad vibes. Paint gives me like friendly uncle vibes. Yeah, I I don't like the I don't like the lines where where or I don't like where my thoughts are going. There's uh, only right one now. dad in this conference, and he's he's not my dad anymore, but he used to be. Is it Brad? It's Brad. It's Daddy Brad. That's that's the dad here. That's the only Who, dad. Who's, who's the grandpa of the conference? Izzo. It's not Woodson? No, Izzo. Who's the cool uncle of the conference? Paint. Who's the trouble? Who's the who's that uncle that has one too many at the Christmas party and makes everyone uncomfortable? Ooh, maybe like Fran. Maybe, yeah, probably Fran or like Greg Gard. Greg Gard. Yeah. No. I Greg don't like this exercise. Little, anymore. Greg, Greg Gard gets a little handsy. With, okay. With the nieces and nephews. Good Lord. Let's move on. Uh, let's see here. Eric NJ Boiler says when evaluating the top 100, Screech. That teaches me to not post before the segment is over, as Greg just said my point. Should the topic be revisited as the top 10 or top 20 most dominant single seasons of the 21st century? Uh, I got to be honest, I'm a little bit lost on what is being asked here. I think I, I must have just brought up whatever his question was. 
Uh, I don't think the topic should be tweaked. I think the topic from yesterday's episode was the appropriate topic. There was a lot of discussion in the Discord about like uh, how can how can Ed be number one? How can he be the best player if it's the Hurley era? And like one, I brought that up on the show. Two, Hurley isn't qualified to be on a best players of the twenty first century list card. Like how I don't see how that's relevant. You know? Yeah, no, I agree. We're just ranking players. We can't put UConn or Hurley at one. So, like, do you want Donovan Klingon to be one? Players are players. I don't get it. I Maynard says, I saw an account on X today called Tar Husky with Baycott and Klingon in the profile pic. Are we allowed to fan police this type of activity? I don't think I'm an advocate for any fan policing. Yeah, I think people should be able to root for whatever they want to root for. Yeah, just let them rock. We need it's more mutants. That's that's what that's. Oh, okay. I see the angle you're pulling here. I need an army. Oh, you I need it. You do not need an army. I need an army. You do not. Uh, need if you want to be in my army, DM me. Purdue Fox wanted us to add Dilf as a category in the father segment. That's the final comment of the day. Do you want to want to pick who the Dilf of the Big Ten is? Not necessarily. Yeah, you do. I don't. Not really, no. Yeah, you do. I mean, we're going to keep it a buck. The Big Ten Conference coach is not, not the most aesthetically pleasing coaches. Yeah, there. there is. Oh, yes. good Lord, Greg. There's one, there's one handsome devil cart. He's still got that tan. Go ahead. He made the tan work. He's riding Go ahead. Bike right now as we speak, keeping Go that ahead. figure to lean and mean. Uh, it's, it's Dusty May. It's my Dust, Dustin. I mean, he's he, you, you said the Big Ten's lacking handsome. There's no shortage of handsome in Ann Arbor, Carter. That's good. 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 Good on you. It feels good to have a handsome head coach. It really does. <laughs> I love that for you. I haven't had this in my life. I've never. Tommy Amaker was the last handsome head coach I had. Oh, wait a goddamn minute. Don't make me stand for Juwan. No, <laughs> Uh, let's get to the show. Cart, do you want to uh, be the word from our sponsor today? Nah, chosen one doesn't have to do whatever he doesn't want to do. You do it. We're brought to you by NBA 2K Lab. Uh, 2K Lab is constantly making some of the coolest things that enhance your NBA 2K playing experience. They have a full NBA mock draft simulator over on the NBA 2K Lab.com website right now you can play a bunch of other mini games but uh our big board our top 75 players for the 2024 nba draft are featured prominently in the nba draft simulator go check it out link in the description of this video thank you to nba 2k lab for partnering with us throughout the month of june all right you wanted this topic today we're gonna do who is the x factor for each top 25 team 25 seems like a lot of teams but uh, again, this is your topic, not mine. You have ESPN's top 25 for next season up right now. We're going to go off that list and just determine who the X factors are. So you can work your way through the team's list here, Car. Who do we start with? All right, we're going to start. Actually, you know what? I'd like to start at 25 and work our way down to one. We always start at one. And, I'm, and we're going to switch it up today because I'm the chosen one. All right, so we're going to start at 25 here with Rutgers. Who is the X Factor for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights this year and the Fighting Pikles? Mm. Mm. Steve Pikel. The coach is the X Factor. Steve Pikel is the X Factor. Why is he the X Factor? Because if Steve Pikel is truly incapable of running good offense, this team's going to stink. And this thing, he has the talent. There's no more excuses. He has the offensive talent. He needs to produce a good offense for the first time in his entire career. Okay. I like that pick. He does have, I mean, he's got the talent. Like you said, the offense, I'm going to stick mostly players on this exercise just to give you a little insight moving forward. I'm going to pick Jeremiah Williams because when Rutgers was actually playing well last season, I think Jeremiah Williams play was a really big part of that, to be honest with you, when he finally got eligible finally played he was a guy who was threatening to put up like triple double threats he's played a lot of basketball and I think it's gonna be much needed next to the youth they have on the team so playing next to Dylan Harper I think Jeremiah Williams is gonna be a big piece on that uh and then Ace Bailey as well so I'm gonna pick the x-factor is Jeremiah Williams uh for Rutgers 
Okay. I don't hate that. Okay. Moving on. The Xavier Musketeers, obviously bringing in massive, massive class. Sean Miller is the coach. Uh, Zach Fremantle might play here. Uh, cool. That's why I. That's why. That's why I went with this one. This is easy to me. It's it's, it's Fremantle and his health. It's Fremantle's health. Because if his health is good, finally, and if he is healthy, I think that the Xavier team is going to be a real factor in the Big East. Zach Fremantle might play. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm I'm yeah. happy he might play. Just that's yeah. the X factor. This is why I'm skeptical of Xavier. Like the second best bullet point for their team is like this guy might play. I'm going Dante Maddox. To me, uh, Xavier is good when they have a really dynamic guard. I think Maddox could be the best player on the team. If he is, then I'll take them seriously. But they need that from him. They need him to be Sule Boom. Sule Boom was so much fun to watch. So good. Loved him. So good. All right. Texas Tech Raiders at number 23. McCaskill and the gang. What do you have as the X factor for Texas Tech? McCaslin. McCaslin. My fault. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know if there's an obvious one for Texas Tech right now. Do I mean, some op- some options, given their projected starting lineup, Elijah Hawkins, Chance McMillan, Darion Williams, JT Toppin, Frederico, Frederico. Federico, Federico, sorry. Um, Yeah, I don't think there's, like, any individual player here that makes i you know what dad yeah, screw it christian anderson's the x factor oh christian anderson's the x fact he's like the upside swing here i don't think any of the other guys they have are like upside guys but if christian anderson like walks through that door and he's actually trey young i mean that would change everything in conjunction with that i'm gonna say it's a, it's a this is an x factor duo if Christian Anderson is special, combine that with JT Toppin building on his Mountain West freshman of the year, 12 and 10, basically, that he that he averaged as a freshman. You could be looking at one of the youngest, best one-two punches in the Big 12. So in conjunction with yours, I'm going to say JT Toppin. Okay. I don't like the conjunction. I don't feel like there was any conjunction there, but that's okay. You do Conjunction, your- conjunction, what's your malfunction? This is my exercise. Stop. Moving on to number 22. Stop words. What? It's not just not the words. Just move on. What do you mean it's not the words? It's not the words of the it, conjunction, junction, what's your function. Is that a song? Yeah, you did conjunction, conjunction, what's your malfunction, which is not the words. Oh, I didn't know that was a song. Okay, uh, moving yes, on. Yes, you did. What were you trying to reference? I thought it was just a saying. Number 22, the Ole Miss Rebels. Just a liar, man. Why? Um, speaking of liars, the X factor for Ole Miss is Chris Beard. <laughs> Jeez. Why is it Chris Beard? Because of just the, the new pieces that they have? Yeah, they got a lot of talented guys. They have, I, I think I counted this up when we did the state of the program. They have nine guys who scored double figures last season. There is no shortage of talent. I think this season comes down to, like, is Chris Beard still a top five coach like we thought he was a few years ago, or has that changed? Hmm. okay i'm gonna say with everyone coming in i think the x factor is matthew morell taking another step and i feel like that's asking a lot of a guy who tested nba waters uh averaged 16 a game last season but like i think he could be first team all sec possibly if old miss is good enough he could be in the running for sec player of the year if he's able to up his production surrounded by that talent, which he might be able to do, who knows? I'm not sure if he takes a step back or not, but like it, it's always been there with Matthew Morell in my eyes. Like I've always been a fan of his game and maybe in this last season that he has, he puts it together like completely, even though I'm not saying he's been bad these past couple seasons, but I'm talking about he takes one more step. Uh, and I think that elevates Ole Miss into maybe an SEC contender for real. Have we ever talked about how the word Ole being in a school's name is insane. Ole Miss, Ole Miss. Like, why aren't they just Miss or like Old Miss? Like, what Old? We're really giving them Old, and we've all just like accepted that. That's insane. You don't like it? No. Do oh, you like okay. it? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. I I don't. Yeah, I don't. I used to think it was Ole Miss. That's. I'm very um, believable. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly. Uh-huh. Uh, number twenty-one, the UCLA Bruins. Don't just pick coaches for everyone. Are you going to say Cronin? No, no. I'm Are not. you sure? Yeah, I'm not. I think it's a Daymara. A Daymara actually being being good? 
Yeah, I'm very skeptical. Um, but if a is who he was supposed to be last season, then I think UCLA is probably really good and probably wins a bunch of games in this conference. And there's, we talked about, there's a lot of teams without centers. Like my team has two good centers. Indiana has a good center. Uh, I think Purdue thinks they have good centers, but you don't really know who it's going to be yet. Stephen Crowell is still there. Outside of that, there's a bunch of teams with unproven guys at center. So like if a day is a lottery pick, then UCLA is going to win a lot of games. Yeah. I know a lot of people are pegging Dylan Andrews to be like the, the point guard that steps up. I'm going to actually say the X factor is Trent Perry, the mid, the incoming McDonald's all American that they have. If Andrews doesn't necessarily hit, or maybe they want to like, maybe Sebastian Mack in year two, the inefficiency is just kind of, you want him more as a bench guy. Trent Perry is one of the best shooters in this class. And I think that he can provide a lot of shooting to this team that would really help them out. So I'm going to go Trent Perry and see where he kind of falls in that guard rotation. Even with guys like Sky Clark in the fold as well, it'd be interesting to see how that unfolds. Um, Moving down the list, number 20, Florida Gators, Todd Golden and the boys. This one's easy to me. It's it's Elijah Martin. It's which Elijah Martin you get. Are you getting last year's Elijah Martin or are you getting Elijah Martin of the final four run? And maybe the change of scenery changes that. Maybe being away from John L. Davis fixes his mental a little bit. But – on paper, like Elijah Martin should like kind of just go into this team and be pretty seamless, seamless transition into this team. Uh, but I, he needs to be productive and play well uh, next to Walter Clayton and Will Richard. So I think Elijah Martin's the easy answer for this one. I like your pitch on that. Um, my initial gut reaction was it's just how good is Walter Clayton actually? Like, could he be national player of the year? Because I think they kind of need that. I'm going to answer with a position. I think center is the X factor for Florida because if hand locked in was just healthy, then there's no questions on this team. They're probably preseason, like top 10, top 15, but they're going to start at center either like Ruben Chinyalu from Washington state who averaged four last year or Sam Alexis from Chattanooga who's six, nine and averaged 10 last year, or like Alex Condon who averaged seven last year. Are any of those guys good? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think they're like SEC good. And even if Elijah Martin and Walter Clayton are awesome, if they don't have a playable center, there is going to be a massive limitation to this ceiling. Somebody needs to be good. Yeah. All right. Inside the top 20 here, Cincinnati Bearcats, number 19. Who's the X factor for Cincinnati? I'm I'm obliged to say this um, just because, you know, it's, it's hook them until it's not hook them anymore. It's Dylan Mitchell being more than donkey dunks. If he can be more than donkey dunks, that really will do a lot for the Cincinnati team. Is he more than Dunky Dunks? I don't know. But if he is, I think there's talent on this team. Dede Thomas, Skillings Jr. was good last season. I like Wes Miller as a coach, but Dylan Mitchell has to bring more to this, more to the game of basketball than Dunky Dunks. Yeah, so Cincinnati screwed. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's Dylan Mitchell. It's like the same roster. They just add Dylan Mitchell to it. So. You're out. I I mean, if Dylan Mitchell's great, they'll be really good. Okay. This, if Dylan this, Mitchell's this, Dylan Mitchell, they probably won't be. This one should light up your life. Number 18, the Indiana Hoosiers. Who is the X factor for your Hoosiers, Greg? Uh, the medical trainer lead. <laughs> yeah. Whoever, whoever runs the training staff for Indiana basketball. Outside of that. That's the answer. <laughs> no, that's the, the they answer. Gotta, they got to stay healthy, and everybody's in a boot right now. Like, okay. <laughs> serious. <laughs> there's, no, there's not a player on this team not in a boot, except gar, except Cardio Cubs. Cardio Cubs is healthy. I think they're all in boots, honestly. I, any, any picture we've seen of Indiana, I can't trust anymore. They've all been Photoshopped out of the picture. Um, no, if it is a player, I would say it's Miles Rice. Is, is Miles Rice like a legitimate star at point, or is he? Yeah, just- that, that's where I was going to go to. Honorable mention and Kenzie and Baco taking that NBA second year level jump could prove absolutely massive for this team. If he be, like, he doesn't get talked about maybe enough. I think he does, but like, I might just be saying like the classic, Oh, no one ever mentions it, but everyone does mention it. If he's like this first round NBA draft pick level talent surrounded by everything else they have, this Indiana team is going to be so ridiculously good. Yeah. The bad thing for Ibako, uh is that I already have like decided it's not even a question. That he's going to be that good. 
Oh. So like, I, he can't even be an X factor because he's going to be that good. But that's bad for him because my expectations are so high. Got you. Okay. Uh, number seventeen, the Marquette Golden Eagles. Uh, 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 it's so hard to pick an X factor for this one. Yeah, like, I Cam, think... like Cam Jones is going to be Cam Jones. Maybe Sean Jones coming back healthy. Like, obviously, he had the ACL thing last year, but they need something. They need somebody else to step up and pick up the 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 absence of what Kolick and Igadaro are. Yeah, I got my answer for that reason. I'm going Ben Gold. Um, I think people think Ben Gold could be like a breakout superstar. And I think all these other guys kind of are what they are. If Ben Gold like is a first team all big east guy, that would change everything for them. Yeah, Ben Gold or David Joplin getting a pass button might be the X factor for this team. Uh, number 17, Coach Cal and his new team, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Um, the X factor for me, ah, because it's Coach Cal and because I think I know how he's going to operate, the X factor might be DJ Wagner. Because DJ Wagner is going to play. Is he going to be good? That's going to be massive. Because I, I think that Coach Cal obviously trusts Wagner and likes him, and I think he's going to play him. So, like, I, I think what he brings to the table will probably be the X factor for the Razorbacks. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the top out. I just think it's Cal. Like, did Cal actually learn from his mistakes or not? Are his rotations better or not? That's the whole season. Like, the talent's there. It's just is he playing the right guys or not? Mm. All right, the Purdue Boilermakers, who, by the way, Greg, According to Jeff Borzello's projected starting lineup, Braden Smith, Fletcher Lawyer, Cam Heidi, Trey Kaufman, Ren, and Daniel Jacobson. Really? Yeah. Really? Huh? Really? Yeah. Who's been saying that? Huh? Uh, huh? Ah. 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 Uh, their X Factor's me. <laughs> how, <laughs> how right was I? Period. Like, am I am I right or am I wrong? That's that's the X factor. If I'm right, they're gonna be awesome. You being the X factor of Purdue basketball is one of the scariest propositions I think anybody could be faced with, and Purdue Nation should be scared. Uh huh. <laughs> with that said, it's it's Trey Kaufman, Ren, for me. Um, I I just I think that obviously. You're a believer in Jacobson. I am too, but like if TKR is just that good at the center spot, then I think that you can just go Cam Heidi at the four, Colvin at the three, and it'll work out instead of having to be forced to play Jacobson. Yeah, I hear you. You you don't want to play Jacobson at all. That's fine. Um I you could make an argument that everyone here is an X factor. Like literally every guy needs to like take a step forward. I have a second X factor I'd like to present. Yes. Zach Eady. Why Zach Eady is the X factor? Was Zach Eady actually everything or not? That's the question. Zach Eady is the X factor. Like Zach Eady, Zach Eady's legacy is going to change given what this team does. I think that Zach Eady is the X factor for next season of Purdue basketball. They just just will never go away. Uh, number fourteen, the Creighton Blue Jays. Add Papa Isaacs. Add Jemiah Neal. Paul Brenner's back. What is the what's the X factor for the Creighton Blue Jays? Uh Ashworth, I guess. Ashworth, I guess. Yeah, Ashworth, I guess. I'm gonna go Mason Miller. Yeah, that's why like, it's Ashworth, I guess. I just I, just give me something at the four. Like if they get something from him at the four, if they get anything from anybody, I don't really care who it is, to be honest with you. Like they need something from the four spot. It was just it was an eyesore last year. I feel like it's gonna be an it might possibly be an eyesore this year. Mason Miller needs to make a jump. Yeah. Yeah, it's Ashworth, I guess. Okay. Number 13, the Tennessee Volunteers. Oh. There's a lot of names I want to say for this one. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah. I'm going to say Dubar. I'm going to say Dubar. I debated saying Akpara, but I think, like, if Akpara is just bad, then it's Igor Milicic at center. 
Yeah. That they'll be fine. To me, they, they need somebody to alpha. I actually think Dubar will be the best player on this team. Hey, I, you kind of talked me into that one. Uh, I was going to say Ziegler. Like him, if he's if he's able to stay healthy, and he like down the stretch last season, he was playing really really well. Looked like his old self. Um, played a lot of games. Having him at the point guard spot, I think it's going to be if they can get some production out of him and not have a, a Zakai Ziegler getting benched mid season thing. It'll bring some great continuity to this Tennessee team that I think will, you know, help the alphas kind of uh, show themselves. Uh, number twelve. My Aggies, the Texas A&M Aggies. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say the X factor is Manny. I think the X factor is, uh, I think when he played well towards the end of last season, that's when they looked their best. But I think I'm going to take the words out of your mouth this season or for this one. Is it just Wade Taylor and whether he's just doing the the gunning thing? The shooty shoot? The shooty shoot. Um. Are we going coaching in here? Is it buzz? It's not coaching. How do you like? Let's see. How do I say this? Maybe Henry Coleman playing well, like after an injury last season, like kind of an injury full season last year. Be an X factor. Like continuity. My question with Texas A&M is like, are any of these guys actually good? Because they they kind of stunk all of last year. And, like, now we're just, like, we're doing it again without Boo. Ah, or Boots, whatever the, whatever the hell his stupid nickname was. Radford. Uh, like, I I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't be excited about running this back with Wade Taylor, who shot 36% from the floor, and one, two, three, four, five, six different returning players that didn't score nine points a game last year. Like, is anyone good? I think I might be excited about them running it back. <laughs> I guess that le- my X factor has to be one of the new guys. I think I'll say it's Phelps, Zuri Phelps. Zuri Phelps. Okay. Whether the X factor is him not trying to outweigh Taylor, Wade Taylor. And it's just yeah. them two just having a shoot off. Um, or like Pharrell Payne. Does Pharrell Payne just like prove that he's way better than Henry Coleman and that helps him big? Right. Like that could happen. Do Pharrell Payne's knees stay healthy? I'm also so out passing. on AM. I'm so out. Uh, <laughs> all right, number 11, Auburn Tigers. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I was going to say Dan Hurley not leaving so that Bruce Pearl leaves, but now that is Maddie not... Pruitt's dad still on staff? Who? That's a bachelorette thing. You'd, you'd be unfamiliar. I'm going to say. It's probably the new guards. It's Miles Kelly and Pagu, Pagas, however you like to say his name. I'm going to say Denver Jones. Year two, transfer. Those are our favorites. He was probably the best of the guards last year. Average nine last season. Still think he could take a jump in year two. Um, honorable mention, Chad Baker, Mazzara's temper. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be massive moving forward. Uh, I am workshopping a take that the Auburn backcourt got worse from last year's backcourt, and nobody wants to admit it. I'm going to need some more information on that eventually. Like they, Aiden Holloway is actually a big loss, and everyone wants to pretend Trey Donaldson stunk, but like these guys are worse than Trey Donaldson. I love Aiden Holloway. He did stink last season. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Number ten, the North Carolina Tar Heels. Um. Whatever walk on plays at the five for them. Well, right now their current projected starting lineup is Elliot Cadeau, RJ Davis, uh, Ian Jackson, K Tyson, uh, Lubin. Yes, Greg. Uh, they're just starting a six eight center who's not a center. He's a three. One he is a five. Um, is Lubin on six eight? Yeah. I mean, if this is the team, if this is the team, I'm going to say it's Elliot Cadell. Yeah. Because it, like their, their season will hinge on him taking a huge step forward. So I was going to say Cadell originally, but I'm going to pick a player who, if he's just like that good and he's the top 10 prospect that he is, like you don't even care about Cadell, is it's it's Jackson. 
if Jackson is that good, then you just kind of move off of Cado and you just go RJ Jackson and then fill in somebody else maybe at that three spot. So North Carolina doesn't have a center. It's going to start a six foot eight forward there. Neither of us picked center as our option. I picked a guard I don't believe in, and you picked a different guard that would take the guard you don't believe in spot. And you're really in on North Carolina still. RJ Davis is still on the team. He is. Hey Tyson. Let's move on. Number nine, the Arizona Wildcats. <laughs> the the only answer is Caleb Love. They they go as he goes always. That's it. That's a scary proposition. Nobody else matters. It, just like every what, what, other what Caleb about, Love team Trey, he's ever what been. What about Trey Townsend? Every Caleb Love team he's ever been on, their entire season is resolved based on what he does. That's how it works. I'm going to break my rule, and I'm, I'm going to pick Tommy Lloyd. I think Tommy Lloyd might have a time this season, or he might have a situation this year where he has to make a tough choice. And I think he has weapons on this team where he could, if he really wanted to, maybe stop Caleb Love from doing the thing where he hurts the team. Yeah, they Will he do it? I don't know. They, there are weapons on this team, but the problem is the the quote unquote best player is a massive weapon of mass destruction <laughs> that like can just go off at any time. There's nothing you can do. All right, George Bush. Uh, number eight, the Duke Blue Devils. Easy one for me. If Cooper Flash is just generational like he's supposed to be, then they're good. It it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they got the Vegemite eating point guard. It doesn't matter that they're starting a Syracuse power forward for a bad Syracuse. It doesn't matter. I don't care about any of that. I don't care that Zion James is shaped like Zion Williamson. Like, I, I don't care if Cooper Flag is just generation. It's Shire because Shire needs to pull the right strings here. Is he going old or is he going young? And he needs to, like, make it mash and work. For the record, I get it. Yeah. Oh, old wins in college basketball. Experience, veterans, grittiness. Ah, sick. Play the young talent and let's rock. Let this could be an ultimate let the young bulls rock movement if given the chance. We just realized we're Duke fans this year. If if Duke is the let the young bulls rock team this year, uh, we have we gotta to be. be we got to go full brotherhood. We have to go full Duke people. I don't know if I can. We have some time to figure it out, but they're definitely the let the young bulls rock team. Riley's gonna have to figure it out too. Good grief. <laughs> Uh, Iowa State. Ah, Mom Chilovich. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Gilbert. Really? Because I think that Gilbert has the game to be like that guy. Like we talked about him as a guy who like he's the he's the scoring low guy. He's like the in the NCAA tournament mm-hmm. run last year. I think if Gilbert asserts himself as like a top echelon guard in the big 12. It makes them dangerous. I do like the Monchilovic shout. Um, also, uh, Otz's workout regimen, just staying the same, definitely a factor. I think they like need match- Milan to be like the NBA guy on this team. Like nobody else is going to play in the league. So Monchilovic needs to be like a lottery pick talent. Okay. I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, six, Baylor Bears. It's Edgecomb for me. Just how good is he? Yeah, because, like, I believe in Roach. I think none is what he is. Langston Love is what he is. I believe in Norchad. If, if Edgecomb is what we think he can be, this team is ridiculous. I'm going to say Norchad because I have had motivation concerns with Norchad, even though he's been extremely productive. Is Norchad just cashing checks? Or is Norchad, like, which I, I'd assume he told people he went to Baylor because he wants to win a national title. Not about the money, but like, was that a lie? (laughs) I I feel like his pick of Baylor kind of reinforces the fact that he's not just trying to cast a check. Otherwise, he would have gone back to Miami, right? Yeah, I just, Baylor hasn't had a center as good as him, in my opinion. And what does it look like? Like, is is Norchad the best player on this team? It's possible. I think the guards are going to be good in some form. No matter how good VJ is, the guards will be good. They need Norchad to be like first team all Big 12, and then they're unstoppable. All right. Uh, Number five, the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Is. 
I want to say Khalif Battle. But I don't know. I don't feel like it's Ben Gregg. I don't, I don't really know that say there anything. is an X factor on Gonzaga. I think they're just they are what they are and they're good. Like Mark like, Few have Mark Few have an Uber app? Can I say I'll say Steel Venters? Because like what if he's really good? I like that. Okay. I'll take that. I I honorable mention if Michael Ajayi is actually like this NBA guy that we're being told he is. Yeah, I think it's just the new guys. Like all all the new guys. Guys that did not play for this team last year. Like, do any of them raise the ceiling? New guys and old guys liking each other. So Gonzaga's X Factor is Gonzaga. <laughs> Gonzaga's X Factor is friendship. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. All right. Uh, number four, Houston. This is easy for me. Uh, Sharp. Who? Sharp. Emmanuel Sharp. That's probably it. I think he's their best player. I, eh, eh. Uzan's the X Factor. Is he good or not? If he's Jamal Shed Light? Yeah. Is, like, can he do 80% of Jamal Shed stuff or no? Are you saying you want? Are you saying you want more? No. Sorry, I'm working on my baby hand. This is more, right? Uh yeah. This is more than this is all done. Okay, sorry, I'm working on that. Um, that's you know, yeah. Uh, UConn Huskies X Factor. How stupid Dan Hurley's players are. Yes. <laughs> Truly, that's like. How stupid is Terrace Reed on the court? I've said I think he's one of the lowest IQ players in NCAA history. And Dan Hurley's running around telling everyone he loves coaching at UConn because his players are stupid. I'm gonna I'm gonna just say the Hurley circus is the X factor. Like the what does it do? Oh. How does it how does it motivate? Which way does it go? Does it negatively impact? Does it positively impact? Everyone assumes it's gonna be so positive that there's also a world where it's negative. Just let that be known. The Hurley circus. Um number two. deserves a shout too. Sure. Well, shout out Aiden. <laughs> uh, number two, Alabama Crimson Tide. Ah. It it's got to be Oats because like he has the team, the talent. It's Oats. It's Oats pulling the right strings. It's Oats keeping guys happy. It's Oats making. It's Oats handling all this. That's that's just a scary proposition. Um, I'm I'm gonna say Cliff. I'm gonna say Cliff. Cliff might not be as good as everybody thinks Cliff is. Uh oh. Greg, I don't know about that. He no. just might. He might not be like. Like, are we gonna sit here and act like Cliff's gotten better since the Cliff he was three years ago? No, we are not. So, like, Cliff's been on a lot of losing teams, hasn't he? Uh, yes, yes. Played a lot of losing basketball the last couple of seasons. Yes, yes. That's the guy? Is that Pykele or Cliff? I like Grant Nelson at the five better than I like him at the four next to Cliff. <sighs> Cliff being the X Factor is a scary proposition. Yeah, I don't like that. Let's move on. Last but not least. No, not more. All done. Uh, Kansas. No, it's not my done. <laughs> the number one, the Kansas Jayhawks. X factor for the Kansas Jayhawks. Ah! AJ Store. AJ Store. Everybody's gonna act like this is like, are the players happy or not? Uh, AJ. If AJ Store is Kansas's best player next season. None of the happiness matters. And he's capable of that. He is talented enough to be the best player on the best team in the country. Yeah, I I probably agree with you on that one. Also, while we're taking projected starting lineup victory laps here, Borzello's projected Kansas starting lineup. Dewan Harris, Zeke Mayo, AJ Store, KJ Adams, Hunter Dickinson. Yeah, Ryan Griffin's gonna start. Some way, somehow. All done. Okay, that was an extremely fun, tedious exercise. Let's get to another fun, hopefully slightly less tedious topic today. What's most likely to go wrong? <laughs> that sounds fun. 
Uh, we we spent a bunch of topics in the last few weeks doing like best case scenario, team specific best case videos. Uh, what what could go right for certain players and teams in the Big Ten? Today we want to do Big Ten, but we are going to imagine a world where each team in the Big Ten misses the NCAA tournament. So we we have to force ourselves to imagine this team is not in the NCAA tournament. What went wrong? What is the biggest reason why they are? Not in the NCAA tournament. Any questions before we embark on this journey together? Okay. The people listening to this can't see that we're doing sign language. Oh, sorry. My, my bad. Uh, no, no more. No more questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go down the list of teams in order of Jim Root's roster sheet. So we start with Maryland. What will be the biggest reason Maryland misses the NCAA tournament if they miss the NCAA tournament? Ah, uh, I think uh, I think the biggest reason they missed the tournament is Gillespie's just an awful version of Jameer Young. Okay, mine is Deshaun Harris Smith is the exact same guy, and if you try to play that guy thirty five minutes, your team stinks. It, it, well, do you think he's going to be the exact same guy? Yes, you do. Yep. Ugh. Okay, so that explains you being down on Maryland. Though. Hard, he was broken the entire season. Yeah, yeah. Like, he wouldn't shoot the ball, even. He wouldn't even try to do things. Yes. And yes. then Maryland, Maryland's just, like, running it back. Like, yeah, that's still our starting two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's such a bad sign. I don't yeah. get it. Hopefully, Kevin Willard knows something I don't. Okay, Indiana. God forbid. All things burn to the ground. This team misses the NCAA tournament. What went wrong for Indiana? They never got out of the boots. Um, Injuries? Uh, no, I honestly, I think it's it would have to be it, – it's the same thing with every Indiana team. It crashes and burns. It'll be because of the point guard position. It, it'll be that maybe Miles Rice and Cannon Carlisle were on Mickey Mouse runs in the Pac-12, and it, it just doesn't it doesn't work out. And Gabe Cup starts games. That won't happen. I uh, I think it's missing it's shots. It's worst case scenario. I think this team could still be a bad shooting team. Like, that's a possibility. I'm not banking on it. I believe in the shooting upside of some of these guys. But, like, Miles Rice shot 27% from three. Galloway shot 26%. And Baco shot 32%. Renew shot 33%. Carlisle shot 32%. Balo shot 0%. So, the best shooter in your six-man rotation is Malik Renew. That that's <sighs> ominous. That could be bad. And then I can't believe you didn't say this. Mike Woodson could go wrong for this team. That's a given. But like that, that if why did Indiana miss the tournament with this roster? The only answer could be Mike Woodson. Well, you said we shouldn't do things that aren't realistic. Is that realistic? I never actually heard you say that's realistic. I don't think there is a world where Indiana misses the tournament. But if they do, I, you have to point the fingers at Woodson with this. The roster should be really, really good. There's always a world where Mike Woodson's at the helm. <laughs> All right. Michigan misses the tournament. What went wrong for Michigan? Hmm. There's a lot of things that could go wrong here, to be honest. Yeah. I would say the thing that could go wrong the most is that, I mean, I'm not sure this is the right term or like the right way to put it, but just like, you really feel the lack of that not getting maybe the big like the the guards are just that bad that like the front court doesn't matter. I'm gonna rattle through my various things I think could go wrong. Point guard's a disaster and Trey Donaldson stinks. The guard position as a whole is so bad that Namari Burnett ends up playing huge minutes. Roddy Gale is just a losing player. He's not an alpha on a good team. Uh the front court is clunky and can't guard anybody. Wolf and Golden straight up cannot play together. And uh, lastly, and my loudest answer, which will be my official answer for this exercise, you let Jace Howard be on the team. Like, Jawan Howard's son is on this team, and Jawan's going to be in attendance for games in Dusty May's first year. There are massive locker room blow-up implications here. Massive ones. I mean, also one big factor of reason. Don't think it could happen, but it it there is a world where Dusty May is bubble TJ Warren. That's also one. 
All right, Wisconsin, they missed the NCAA tournament. What happens? They play to their ceiling. Yeah, they play their <laughs> they they play the season. Uh, <laughs> their year goes as planned. <laughs> so should, for the teams that we think are gonna miss the tournament, do we need to like lower it? Like let's say Wisconsin finishes last in the big time. What happened? Um they play their schedule. Um Jeez. no uh I'm trying to think like what it would it would have to be an injury, I think, and I don't want to do that. That's the thing. Yeah, don't do that. I'll just say, uh, to summarize as best I can, Max Klesman's their leading scorer. Like, if if Klesman ends up being like the most talented guy on this team, that means everybody else didn't hit, and things are going to get ugly. Uh, Ohio State, they missed the NCAA tournament. What happened? Sorry, I want to go back. The worst case that finished last, Blackwell gets tampered with. Yeah. After the midseason. Yeah. Good call. That's it. You Good get call. Stick of it. Uh, which which would make Klesmith the number one option, like you said. But that's how it happens. So it needs to happen like that for it to really bottom out. Great answer. Um, sorry, what team was that again? Ohio State is next. What goes wrong for Ohio State? Jake Diebler goes wrong. He's just bad. Yeah, his the shine wears off. That's who you signed. That's who you went with. He's just bad. Evan Mahaffey is still a starter. Is he still on the team? Yeah, he's still no on the team. way. He's still on the team. He's projected sixth man per Jim Roots rosters. There's a lot that could go wrong with Ohio State, much like Michigan. Like Bruce and Michi don't get along. Uh, the front court guys just aren't good because as excited as everyone was about Sean Stewart and Aaron Bradshaw, those two combined to average six points a game last season. So if those are your guys, I think it's a little ominous. Um, but yeah, I'll say like something doesn't hit and Mahaffey has to play big minutes. That would scare me. Michigan State misses the tournament. What goes wrong? Oh, what doesn't what doesn't go wrong? Um, let's see. I mean, Jeremy Fears is bad. Xavier Booker doesn't get better. Jay Nakins, probably honestly the most Jay Nakins at the two just is not it. Like we think it's going to be, we think it's going to be great. And we like, he does, he's not able to get past people and create his own shot. Um, I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing would actually be the Aikens point. Like rather than being a breakout guy, Aikens is just the guy he's been all three years. Yes. Which like we've all, I think you had a point late in last season. that was like, we need to stop asking Aikens to be something he's not. Like, just just embrace that he's a really good catch-and-shoot guy, and that's it. Now we're asking him to be something he's not, his final season, and everybody seems to think it's going to go great. There is a pretty obvious world where it might not. Um, I think that would be the one. I think the other would be, like, Fears just isn't ready, or Fear, Fears isn't physically capable of being a starting point guard yet. Um, the center spot is what it is, but to me, yeah, Aikens has to be the big one. I'll throw a bonus caveat in. Uh, because I'd love to keep doing this for 20 more minutes rather than just gracefully moving on. Uh, A.J. Hogard is better than any player on Michigan State next season. A.J. Hogard at Vanderbilt has a better season than any individual Michigan State player has. I, I wouldn't allow that to happen. I and while that. that's happening, A.J. keeps interacting after every mission. Like, A.J. sitting in Nashville – is like tweeting out game results from Michigan State. Like, lock in, big dog. Still believe in y'all. SD4L. I would not let that happen. I can't. You, you take it in your own hand? I would take it in my – I don't know what that entails, but I I would do whatever I have to do. Iowa finishes last in the Big Ten. What happens? Fran retires midseason. That was my answer, too. Yeah, he's just out. And, like – Peyton Sanford like opts out to protect his draft status. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every everybody just quits. Yeah. Uh Purdue. Purdue misses the NCAA tournament. What happens? We're doing things like in worlds we think this happens, right? Yeah, we have to envision a world where Purdue misses the NCAA tournament next year. What happened? I think it had to be Cam Heidi, like not being what people think he's going to be. Yeah, a lot of guys, but Heidi. Well, you could, you could, you could do that for a lot of people, though. Yeah, 
Um, I mean, the the skeptics are just right. The skeptics are right about Braden. Like he he was an Edie Merchant. <laughs> um, like <laughs> Fletcher Fletcher hits a wall again. TKR is not a starting center. He's like a backup guy or a four. Um, the real answer for me that is most likely to cause Purdue problems is all of the freshmen aren't ready. Like all of them, because mm. everyone seems to just think like paint signing a six man freshman class was like a good move. I think it's a crazy move for a team that's trying to be like a win now team in 2024 to not use the portal and instead welcome in five freshmen, many of whom are not rotation guys. That's crazy. Like that, you could have gotten some guys who are ready to help you. And instead, like, do you really need Jack Benter and CJ Cox and Rally Burgess on this team? Even yeah. if those guys are really good one day. Like, that's just a lot. And there's a world where all of them are unplayable. Yeah. Seize the moment. Yeah. Uh, Nebraska. Nebraska misses the tournament. What happens? Uh, they're the worst three-point shooting team in the Big Ten. <laughs> they just can't make shots. Cannot. No no one can make shots. Seaton can't make any shots. Bryce Williams can't make any shots. Gavin Griffiths won't make any shots. Like, they just are the worst shooting team in the Big Ten. Connor Asesian, Gavin Griffiths, and Burke Buchtensel do not get along, is my answer. Like, those three all think they're the white boy with some shit to him, and, like, they're upset that the other two are in the picture. Too many white boys with too many shit, too much shit to him in one It ends up like real-world Lincoln is a season, and, like, those three just, like, fight over politics, you know? Or, <laughs> with with Hoiberg, the mayor. As I need, honestly, I need that photoshopped. Uh, okay, Illinois. Illinois misses the tournament. What happens? Um, they ah, what happens? Um, there could be so many, so many ways. A lot goes. of answers. A lot of a yeah, a lot answers. of answers. I'm gonna go with uh. Kylan, Bo Kylan Boswell is not the best point guard on the team. Oh, like Kylan has to be benched because he's yeah. not a starting point yeah. guard. They realize that he's not just young. He actually might just not be that good. Who would take over for Kylan if that happened? Gibbs Lawhorn? Yeah, I think so too. I, uh, I think the most likely one and the most impactful would be Kasparis being unplayable. Like if, if Kasparis mm -hmm. is Jan Vide what what are you supposed to be like what's what's the pivot there ty rogers plays 30 minutes at the two dgl has to play 30 minutes like that would scare me um i think that is a reasonable outcome and i will add the caveat the bonus points uh last year's whole mo that we were sold from the everyday guys locker room was we got the bad people out it's it's about chemistry the bad people are gone the good people are in I think if Illinois missed the tournament, that would mean that the bad people are back in. Like, aren't aren't there some guys on this list that you would circle and maybe think Ty Rogers wouldn't go on a podcast calling them a good guy? Honestly, a podcast weekly appearance by player would be the worst case scenario for Illinois. That'd be bad. I just I feel like we we loved chemistry last year, and then this year we like threw the chemistry out for some guys. That would scare me a little bit. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like you're distracted right now. Did I tune you out? Do you don't like the world where Brad misses the tournament? I just got hit with a um an email that I don't think I was supposed to be on, but I was on it. Whoa. But we'll be okay. I'm locked back in now. Is this a work email or a personal email? Work. Do we need a minute? No, we're good. I, I just can't believe that happened. And now I'm about to ask you this question. Uh, what what question? What happens when Minnesota is the worst team in the Big Ten? <laughs> um, Dawson Garcia leaves to play overseas. Okay. Like, Perth gets into his DMs. Got it. The breakers um, slide into his, his Twitter DMs. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. He just he just shuts it down. I don't have a more creative answer. Northwestern is the worst team in the Big Ten. What what goes wrong? 
uh, Ty Berry uh, is not the same Ty Berry he was before his injury. Boo Booey was just that good. And it like two two games into the season, we realized it was all boo and nobody else. That's all. Uh, Penn State, worst team in the Big Ten. I don't have anything created for this one. They're just Penn State? <laughs> They're just themselves. And yeah, no, nobody besides Ace scores double figures again for the second straight season. Uh, Rutgers. Rutgers misses the tournament. What went wrong? Freshmen aren't dynamic. Easy. I have a different answer. I think it's the center spot. Because I think Harper and Bailey are going to be productive and good, no matter what. But, like, Cart, who's their starting center on paper? I couldn't tell you. It's Emmanuel Ogbole. Who? Emmanuel Ogbole, the guy that averaged two and two last season. Ah. Uh-uh. That that's their big man, and everyone thinks Rutgers is going to be really good. Don't like that. That's that's a lot worse than your center rotation. Let that say. Wa- Washington, Washington misses the tournament. What happens? <laughs> I hate the sign language. Man. Great also Great Osibor is the first player in the NIL era to sit out for non-payments. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, just a mix of like. Chemistry stocks, they have so many transfers mixed with uh Danny Sprinkles, not the one, mixed with adjusting to a new conference across time zones, like just F's them over. It's it's overwhelming in all facets for Danny Sprinkle in year one. USC, what goes wrong if USC is the worst team in the Big Ten? Uh ooh. Uh. Must bringing in a bunch of losers kind of just play like losers. Terrence Williams is like the third best player. Uh, Mus, Mus's locker room is exactly like last year's locker room was. Bonus points that St. Thomas is unplayable. Uh, the St. Thomas breakout your stuff has gone too far. It started with you, and now there's a lot of like smart people doing it too. I don't All I right. Don't really hey. Know. <laughs> I don't like the way that transitioned. I don't like it. I just now there's like a lot of smart people doing it too. All right, why no, are you early? There's, there's, there's right like now? analytic people. You know what I mean? Like we're we're supposed to be like the reactionary hot take guys, and now we have like analytics and film people being like, keep an eye on St. Thomas. Hey, you never want the he nice watchers and the analytics to be hand in hand. That's when it gets dangerous. It's swinging too far. Uh, Oregon. What goes wrong if Oregon misses the tournament? PJ Bomb is what I said he is. He's a serial tournament misser loser. Jackson Shellstad is not capable of being the best player on a team. That would be my answer. Jackson Shellstad is more Andre Pritchard than Peyton Pritchard. Can you say Jackson Shellstad again? Jackson Shellstad? Jackson? Jackson Shellstad. UCLA is the final one. UCLA misses the tournament. What goes wrong? Um, they allow guy on their staff. No, uh, I'm gonna say a day Mara's bad. So who he was last year? Yes, that's my answer. All these dudes are exactly who they were last year, and you added Sky Clark. Yes, that would that would be what happens. Yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, did you have fun with that exercise? I liked it better than best case scenario, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Negativity. There's a time and a place for it. Yesterday on the episode without you, me and Brian Ralph, Brian Ralph and I did the uh, who's the best player in the 21st century discussion. Does Zach Eady actually belong? at the top of the list of every player since the 21st century. Uh, today, I want to go off of that, and I want to do a draft. I want to do a fun little back and forth, a cute little snake draft. You and I just doing a little snake draft today. A little snakey snake. All right. Uh, every player that has played college basketball for at least one season in the 21st century is eligible to be drafted. We are both going to draft eight-man rosters. You are, like, really laughing and making faces about this. I'm nervous. Also, do you know what the 21st century is? I was going to ask, uh, is it, this, is a, <laughs> this is a safe space, right? I mean, I don't know how safe our podcast is. 
what year did the 21st century start? Hard, man. I, I believe we're going back to 2000. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you want me to fact check that? I mean, is this like, is this like a birthday thing? Like once you reach a, like once you reach a year in, you're a year old, like you turn one. The, so the 20th century was yeah. 1901 to 2000. So the 21st century was 2001. So, that makes sense. We we are in the okay. You know, that make, okay. That makes sense to me. So every now I want to fight this because my daughter was a human even when she wasn't one. That's what I'm saying. So this th that see okay we're on the same page here. This should be the this should not be the twenty. This should be the twentieth century. We are experiencing the twentieth century. No, I what? think this. I think this should be the twenty first century. I think it should have started in two thousand though. 2000 was the start of the 21st century. I don't think the 21st century should start until 2000, 2101. All right. So going back to 2001, every player that's played college basketball for one season is eligible. That's yeah. how this is going. Do you want the first pick or the second pick? We're both drafting eight players. Uh, I am going to take, I'm going to take the first pick. Fascinating. Okay. You're up. Who you got? Uh, see, I could go aggressive here and just take somebody you want that I don't really want, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay strong here. I'm going to take Chris Paul. Dog, what? 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 I'm going to take Chris Paul. Why? Why is that <laughs> Chris Paul is probably the best. I mean, Chris Paul is an NBA Hall of Famer. <laughs> what? Chris Paul is the best college basketball player to you of the 21st century? I'm building the team here. <laughs> it seems to be nasty. This is so much worse than I thought it would be. Oh, my God. All right. All right. I have two back to back. I'm taking Jalen Brunson and Zach Eady. Okay. I'm going to take... I get two right here, right? Yeah. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Steph Curry and Kevin Durant. Those those are good picks. Chris Paul at one one is absurd. All right. Um. Now I'm like focused on do I beat you or do I go with what I want here? You're not going to beat me. My team's already beat yours. I strongly disagree with that. I'm taking Carmelo Anthony. Mm. I'm taking Carmelo Anthony and I'm taking Zion Williamson. I'm going to take how many players are we taking total? Eight total. Eight total. Okay. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take Michael Beasley and Joel Embiid. <laughs> My team is disgusting. My starting lineup is Chris Paul, JJ. Wait, was it Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant? Michael Beasley and Joel Embiid. Yeah, the Joel Embiid who averaged 11 points a game. As you didn't say anything game. about what it was that they were in college. <laughs> That's the exercise we're doing is players that played in college. My team is full of better basketball players than your team. I strongly disagree with you. Um, you took Chris Paul 1-1. One, one. Who's your I point guard? Jalen Brunson, the best player in college basketball in the 21st century, is my Chris point. Paul card. is a better basketball player than Jalen Brunson. Right? No. First off, no, he's not. Yeah, he is. <laughs> no, he's not. Is is Jalen Brunson a top 75 NBA player of all time? Brunson was going for 40 in the playoffs right now. Is, is, is Brunson a Hall of Famer? Jesus Christ, man. I'm taking J.J. Redick, and I'm taking Anthony Davis. Good picks. I should have got AD. I... 
think I had destroyed you in this draft. If that wasn't obvious when you took Chris Paul 1-1 in the best college basketball players since the 21st century. But oh, go on. Go, oh, my God. Go on. Okay, I'm going to pick. I don't know. I'm going to take Trey Young. Do you have... <laughs> And then I'm going to pick Chris Paul, Steph Curry, and Trey Young. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to go Draymond Green. Felt like a little bit of a reach to me. Probably. A little bit. Um, Yeah, you did so bad at this. Do I have one more pick? You do. I have two picks right now, though. Okay. I'm taking the guy who many people believe has been the best player in college basketball in this span. I'm taking Tyler Hands, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a reaction? That, what's that laugh about? Hey, sick pick. Just, like, put these teams on paper. Like, my team is <laughs> destroying yours. I think my team's destroying My yours. team's full of better basketball players. I have Anthony Davis, Carmelo Anthony... Zion, Brunson, and Reddick. Zion? Bad and freaky and self can't even get on the court. This is so bad of you. Um, uh, there's a lot of ways I could go with this last pick. I could take Budarius. I could take my personal favorite player of the 21st century. I could take Trey Burke. Uh, I could try to like outdo you at your own game. By taking like the best NBA player who has come through college basketball in the span. Um I could try to play for clicks for engagement when I know we're gonna do a graphic on this. And I could take like D Brown. I could take Braden Smith to piss people off. But I'm gonna play the game the way it should play. I'm gonna I'm gonna respect the game and take the best player here. And I'm gonna take friend friend of the show, friend of the program. I'm gonna take Jay Will. Jay Williams. Wow. Wait, Real Jay Will. Wait, wait. Oh, yeah. I guess he wasn't. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to add up how many national championships my. So, so surprising, team. surprising, no Trey Burke pick from you. Yeah. I, Jay Williams was a better player than Trey Burke. Okay. I'm going to take my last pick is uh, Dwayne Wade. That's a good pick. That's a good pick. How many Hall of Famers do you have on your team? It's not the game. It's not the game. We're we're playing a game of basketball. We're drafting the college version of themselves. You didn't say that. Yes, we did. No, you didn't. Yes, we did. When? So what did you think we were drafting here? Um, I I was drafting a team to play the game of basketball the way our Sir Lord Naismith intended it to be played. And you took Chris Paul first out of everyone. Yes, I took one of the best point guards. I have two of the best point guards of all time on my basketball team. And you have Trey Young for no reason. I have I have three better point guards than you have one. I have Jalen Brunson. He's the best point guard that's played college. I have Jay Williams, who's had the best individual season any point guard's had in college. I got college. Steph Curry. I got Steph Curry. <laughs> I have Steph Curry. I have Kevin Durant. I have Joel Embiid. I have Michael Beasley. I have Dwayne Wade. I have Chris Paul. What are we doing here? Awful. I need someone. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll put this on social, but like, tell people, please inform Carter how poorly he did this exercise. His team is Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Michael Beasley, Joel Embiid, Trey Young, Draymond Green, and Dwayne Wade. And my team is Jalen Brunson, JJ Reddick, Carmelo Anthony, Zion Williamson, Zach Eady, Anthony Davis, Tyler Hansbro, and Jay Williams. I lost you. I destroyed you. I lost you. I can't wait for it. I. You really think you did something here? I did do something here. This was the whole exercise. You didn't cook here. Let's add up National Player of the Years and National Championships. Let's add up all the fames. Let's add up NBA championships. Let's add up all that. So Trey Young is more in the Hall of Fame than Anthony Davis is? No. But you also just named my backups, my backup. Michael point. Beasley. Michael Beasley's more in the Hall of Fame than Carmelo Anthony is. I like how I like how you're picking around on this one. I like how you're picking around. I on just this mine one. can do my team can do everything that yours can do. They just also won national player of the years and championships. All done. Mm-hmm. You know, you really are behaving like my one year old today. One big thing presented by no one.
Uh, my one big thing is I had a scare yesterday, Greg. You I did? A, yeah, I had a scare. What type of scare? I had a, I might have to buy my own Netflix account scare yesterday. Really? Yeah. And then I was looking at it and I was like, damn, these Netflix prices are outrageous. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I bounced back. Uh, we made it happen. Uh, I can't tell you how I made that happen. Not necessarily sure if it's 100% legal, but uh, I made it happen. How would you make it happen? If I told you that, I might be obligated to kill you. Um, I don't want to die. For that reason, I won't tell you. Okay. All right. Um... For my one big thing today, I'd like to ask us all to imagine something, Cart. Um, Do I keep my eyes open while I imagine this? You can close them or keep them open. It's totally up to you. I'd like to take us all back to 2014, Cart. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to go back to 2014. Uh, in 2014, Barack Obama was president. The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1 was the number one movie in America. The number one song in America was Rude by Magic. You know, the why you gotta be so The number two rude. song in America was actually Fancy by Iggy Azalea back in 2014. Uh, in 2014, Cart, Dan Hurley was in his second year at Rhode Island. Rhode Island went 14 and 18 under Dan Hurley in 2014. Pretty long ago, right? A lot of mm -hmm. things have happened since 2014. Mm-hmm. You know what hasn't happened since 2014? What? Rory McIlroy hasn't won a major championship. Rory McIlroy is considered the face of golf, and he has not won a major since all of those things I just pointed out that happened over a decade ago. I can't believe anyone let this happen, straight up. I can't believe any self-respecting fan of the sport of golf has sat here with a straight face and let the media pump Rory McIlroy down our throats for 11 years when this man is the biggest choke artist that sports has seen since I've been alive. Yeah, he missed two three-footers with the U.S. Open on the line. Yeah, he was, I think, 456 for 456 this season from inside three feet until the final two that mattered to win the U.S. Open, that he had a two-stroke lead over Bryson DeChambeau with five left to play. Bryson shot over par on the final five holes and wins the U.S. Open going away because Rory just wilted. He just laid down and died. And people still want me to sit here and talk about, oh, he's going to get one. He's going to get one soon. He's playing better than ever. He's right there. Maybe he's not, because maybe he is actually the biggest choke artist we've seen. Rory has four majors. He's won four majors, none in over a decade. And we've let this man parade around like he's the leader. He's he's the face of an entire sport. No, this man is just the Irish version of Justin Thomas, Jordan Spieth, Ricky Fowler. He's washed. Put him in the group. Get him on the private jet. Hand that man a two-hearted. He's cooked. I will not pretend this man is the face of the sport anymore. He's a choke artist. He's a loser. And Bryson DeChambeau just took his spot as the face of golf that isn't Scotty Scheffler. He's the second face of golf. Put that on the ether beat. Disgusting. I'm so mad at Rory. Except I'm not. I, I enjoyed watching Rory melt down and die. That was horrible. <laughs> Back tomorrow. <laughs>